So here on the Game on Australia podcast, we're trying something new. Uh, we talk all the time about how this podcast is about honesty. Uh, it's not about, you know, going to the suppliers and stuff like that and saying, hey, you know, how good's your game? Yeah, it's this good, because that's generally what you're going to get from them. That's why we need you, the Game on Australia community, to help us out here. And so every week, we're going to be picking something, uh, somebody different and um, getting them to tell us their honest opinion about <clears throat> whether it be a new game or an old game, something classic or retro or whatnot. Uh, today, our very first one, I'd like to introduce Nick Holland. Welcome. Welcome to Game on Australia. Thank you. Thank you. First time uh, call, long time listener. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, mate. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so, dude, we uh, wanted to, to get you because we know that you're a mad keen Destiny player um, from yes. Destiny Vanilla right through to the DLCs in the, the original and then Destiny 2's out the open beta. We ourselves haven't had a chance to touch it, but you yourself have. You've downloaded the open beta, haven't you? I have, yeah. I downloaded it uh, when it was available for pre-launch. So, sitting there waiting for the servers to come online and saying like something that Destiny usually does. No, the servers are not available, but it is ready to go now. <laughs> so have you had a chance to jump in? Have you had a, a crack at it yet? Mate, it's all I've been playing, honestly. I've, I've, I, uh, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch, as you know, but since the beta came out, that's all I've been uh, all I've been playing. So talk us through it. What are your initial thoughts of the Destiny 2 open beta? Oh, the, look, to be honest, there's a lot of mix in it. Uh, graphically, it's where the game should have been at launch you know, 2014 when it came out. Um, it actually plays like it's on next gen as opposed to Destiny 1 where you had those constraints because it was on the PS3 and Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, graphically, it's just it's so much nicer. Um, you know, the first thing you notice when you get into the game is the cutscenes are, are very much taken on from uh, the, the end of the Taken King and, and the Rise of Iron. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's where the game, like I said, should have been. So... You get into the game; it's the 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 tower is in absolute disarray. You know the the, the storyline is picking up where the Cabal Red Legion, so a, a bunch of enemies that haven't been seen before, and now attacking the the tower. They're, they're after the Traveler. They want the light um, that they feel that they should have had. What I can kind of gather from the story, and then you as the Guardian are, are kind of hauling ass to get back to the tower because no one's picking up your transmission, and you just walk into this absolute chaos of of a surprise attack and you know you you play the first story well what they say is the first story mission and um yeah and and from what i can what i can get my teeth into i I can't wait for the the actual game to come out no kidding so yeah Yeah. okay so it looks amazing but does it play really well yeah look they've they've done a lot of tweaking to the game um as as someone who made a, a hunter for most of destiny one um the the mobility of the hunter should have been a lot greater than what the Titans were. Um, Titans obviously were very, very mobile in the first game. Mm. This second one, they actually feel like they've, they've tweaked a lot of the, the jump mechanics. A lot of the, the, the Titan uh, movements have, have been scaled back a little bit. Um, although the Titans do feel ridiculously OP in the beta, um, I, I assume come launch day that that'll be changed. Yeah, I'm sure they'll balance all that stuff. Uh, and I think I think that's a really good thing because the... I don't know, aside from, and I remember when I was playing the Destiny Vanilla and the original DLCs and stuff, aside from um, just the the different ultimates, I guess, and the different looking um, sort of armor that you'd pick up along the way and exotics and whatnot, there wasn't really very much of a different feel to to the Titans versus the Warlock versus the Hunter. And I, mate, I'm really excited to hear that that it sounds like that they've fiddled around with how these characters actually move. That's really cool. Yeah, the other thing they've also done is they've introduced a couple of new supers for the, for the game as well. Um, so you've still got your classic uh, uh, Striker Titan, um, you've still got your Golden Gun for your Hunter, and you've still got your Nova Bomb for your Warlock, but now they've introduced three new subclasses, which I think is going to change the game as well. So they've they've brought in an element of, uh, of, of the Defender Titan, but now it's... It, um, the best way to describe it is like a Captain America shield, so you can actually physically run around and bash people with the shield and launch it at people like you would Captain America style. But if you do want to go back to that defensive style, then, you know, you can hold down the L1R1 and, and still have your Ward of Dawn. Um, Hunter-wise, they brought in what the, what the Destiny community is called the Pole Dancer, but it's actually called the Arc Strider. <laughs> Um, which is kind of going to replace the um, the arc blade, but it's it's more or less like uh, someone described it like a, a Jedi Knight sort of thing. You know, you have got this giant pole of electricity and you just go around comboing 
um, close com- combat sort of thing with the enemy. And then the Warlockers got a um, Dawnblade, which is a fire one, which is basically like the the Titan hammers from Destiny 1, but except you're in the air launching swords at people. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. That sounds awesome. Um, we were very excited about the, the, you know, the launching of more storyline and stuff like that. Um, one in particular was uh, the return of Cade 6, because we saw Cade 6, you know, in great detail towards the back end of the first Destiny. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you see a fair bit of Cade 6 this time around in the, in the opening storyline? Oh, look, it, it, there's, there's no doubt about it. In my opinion, he, he's the, the NPC that actually shines in the game. Um, you know, he's he's he, he's the first one you encounter, and all of a sudden he's talking to you. He's, he's opened up this story, he's talking to you. He's like, oh, just give him two seconds and launches his golden gun and kills these three cabal. And he's like, look, Zabal is trying to do all this, but, you know, I'm going to go find out what's going on here. So, and then disappears. And then later in the game when, you know, the, the main... Uh, the main enemy, Gaul, or Gary, as everyone calls him. From Gary. That, uh, <laughs> he's a braver. Um, if you haven't seen that one, check that out. Of When Zavala and Kate are talking to certain people, it's a, it's a classic. Um, but then later in the game, when you realise that uh, Gaul is actually stealing the light, you know, you hear the communication from, from Kate going, yeah, look, things aren't quite right. My, my gun, my gold gun seems to be disappearing a lot. And then, you know, it gets into that whole aspect of, what is actually going on and uh like i said that's that's what's you know really getting me excited about the the launch of d2 so you've played through um campaign mode and that sounds pretty good have you had a chance to play into uh multiplayer yet yes i have uh so the multiplayer gives you two options you have what the what it, it's funny because traditionally like you, you probably remember from back in the day it's got your, your old control your your your, your mayhem your, your things like that but they've introduced much like Overwatch, um, quick play and competitive. So the quick play is uh, control in the beta, mm-hmm. and the competitive is a Counter Strike style seek and destroy or search and destroy. Sorry. Um, all sorry. Let me just say that all uh, Destiny Two um, PvP is now four versus four, not your traditional six versus six or three v three. Wow, that's interesting. Um, yeah, and they've actually put a, a loadout on top of the screen where it will give you what character and what super they're running um, so you can get an understanding of what's there you'll see which guys have been killed off so that uh, you get a bit more of an understanding of where things are. It just sounds to me like um, and, and we've heard I was speaking to uh, a couple of mates of mine when we were, we were actually well actually it was yesterday and we were putting the Flak Test podcast together um, for Flak Test Gaming and we were talking about Destiny and um, just the things that we'd heard and, and it sounded like that they were trying to balance out um multiplayer and uh and um uh the camp <laughs> and the pve element and also campaign mode but they were they were putting mm. a lot more effort into well, about as much effort into to re-establishing pvp as they were um pve but the the thing that i'm kind of hearing from you it's almost as if they've taken note of the landscape of esports growing and, oh, absolutely. and redesign PvP to reflect the popularity of esports and give people an opportunity to actually drag themselves back into Destiny if they're you know if they're interested in an esports element type multiplayer. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on that. To be honest, like the the little subtle things I've noticed, especially in the PvP element, is is they really increase the the time to get your super and also increase the time that your grenades spawn. So, like I've I've played games here where you know, in the in the this uh, search and destroy where you win six nil, you might not even get a super the entire time. Wow. Um, and, and you're probably looking at like a minute thirty, ninety seconds to to get your grenade back. So, you know, the, there, there's a lot more focus on on, on uh, gunplay, if you will. As opposed to just super spam and grenade spam that the uh, the D one PvP ended up turning into by the end of it. Um, did you drag your? I don't know whether or not you were allowed to do this in the in the open beta yet, but have you dragged your character from Destiny One across? No, no, no. So what they've done is they've just given you three generic characters. So you've just got to, everyone. Everyone gets the same build for Titans, Warlocks, Hunters, um, and I think you can get a set of armor through playing the PvP and then get an extra set of armor playing the PVE. And they've given an exotic gun to every class that you get at the start of the game. So the uh, the Titan gets a, a really cool auto rifle called Sweet Business, which is this giant chain gun. Got about a hundred rounds in the in the mag. Awesome. Um, 
the hunter gets a a, a hand cannon called sunshot which is just unreal that's it, my favorite gun of the game so far and then the warlock gets a, a submachine gun it's like a mini zalo it's called uh, risk runner and, uh, <laughs> it's it it's really cool because i've changed the entire element of gunplay as well so traditionally you had the primary secondary and um heavy in d1 they've now changed it to uh kinetic energy and um power so if you want you can run two auto rifles and a sniper rifle because they've moved snipers fusions shotguns into the uh, area that would have your rocket launchers and your um they've introduced grenade launchers yeah yeah so you have those power weapons and then you have your elemental weapons which will go into that second slot and then kinetic which are just your non-elementals into that first one unreal um <clears throat> along with destiny 2 there's going to be a new social space do you get a chance to actually have a walk around the farm yet uh, the farm goes live uh, as of 1am Monday morning. So they're going to basically let it open for an hour. They're going to pressure test the hell out of it, you know, see how many people can actually get in there without it uh, without it crashing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that'll be the last bit of the social space there. Um, final thing, mate, before we uh, wrap this up. And by the way, you've done an amazing job. This is... Oh, oh, <laughs> couldn't have... Couldn't have uh... I've spoken about the strike. The strike is... I, I meant to say that. I do apologise. But the strike actually feels like a mini raid in itself. And to be honest, it's the best strike that I've played, whether it's Destiny 1 or Destiny 2. And it really sets the bar as to where it should be. Wow. So hang on a sec. So you get an opportunity to play a campaign mode. You get an opportunity to play PvP. And then you get an opportunity to play a strike as well. Yeah, yeah, so I do apologise, I should have said that. Um, the strike is called the Inverted Spire, and it, it basically takes about 25 minutes to complete. Um, I think the, the quickest we've done it is in 20. Um, but it's got, you know, every element of, of almost like a raid that there should be. You know, it's got the, 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 the shooting, it's got the platforming, it's got uh, an area where there's a giant uh, mine area, like a construction site, and you can get wiped out by these giant uh, mining blades just spinning around until you can actually get to the the main boss and then the main boss doesn't have your standard mechanics of just being a bullet sponge you know you, you get it to a level and then it drops the floor out from underneath you go to another level and then it drops oh, the floor out again and yes. then when it gets down to the last probably third of the health then it just turns crazy it's chasing you it's it's spawning more enemies in the uh, explode on you and it, it, it's just it's unreal this Absolutely. is what I, uh, that's what i'm excited about because so many times they were just they were just that they were bullet sponges you know you yeah run around this uh, this little area, you'd fire off a few rounds, you'd give yourself an opportunity to get out of the way while it throws out a pulse or something like that, and then you come back out and you'd, you hammer it again. But um, rinse and repeat, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that sounds brilliant. That sounds like they've put some real effort into um, changing the boss designs around as well. And I, I've always admired... Um, the just talking about those big spinning blades um it's good to hear about those because uh, one of the, the great things about destiny from the original game was the jumping puzzles and stuff that you'd have to go through while you were doing raids or strikes or all that sort of stuff so it's good to hear that the jumping puzzles are still around mm, absolutely it definitely gets that extra element because I, I, I think i've not played the strike like where i haven't been wiped out by one of those blades it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're pretty they're pretty full on well, that's awesome, man. It sounds uh, it sounds like Destiny Two is well on its way to being something that we should be very excited about. Uh, if you had to give it a, a quick number out of ten, what would you give it? Uh, I'd probably give it a solid seven and a half to eight. All right, that's a really good start. Um, mm. Cool, man. And just one more thing: does it? Because one of the things that we always sort of felt as every DLC came out um, from the original Destiny was that it almost felt like they were just re-wrapping enemies and stuff like that. Does it feel the same way? Um, look, the Red Legion, the new Cabal, um, do have that feel to a degree, but there is a lot more uh, what feel like melee enemies and combat sort of stuff. Look, it's like I was saying to you earlier before we started the chat, you know, Destiny is always, to me, feel like, felt like that girlfriend who always treated you wrong, but at the same time was just you know, way out of your league. So every time she kind of showed a bit more interest in you, you come back to it. So uh, <laughs> I'm really hoping that, uh, that, that the lessons learned from D1, you know, it's not just putting out a DLC for the sake of getting a bit more money or just for the sake of putting one out, you know. If the storyline is where it needs to be, if the raid's where it needs to be, then great. Let's get some more stuff going, but make sure that it's actually worth the, you know, the money that we're spending on it. 
Wicked, dude. Um, well, thank you so much for giving us your time for the Game on Australia podcast and telling us a little bit about uh, the Destiny 2 Open Beta, what we can look forward to. It's it's our uh, average gamer review. It's the stuff that we're after on Game On, are just about being honest about video games and stuff like that. So uh, thanks a lot, Nick Holland. Appreciate your time, mate. My pleasure, mate. Anytime.